Hello and welcome back. I am here with the almost completed model. I have attached the horizontal stabilizers, the vertical stabilizers, uh, except before landing gear is on. Um, got it all. I uh, gave it a quick uh, coating on it so we can start putting the decals on it. Uh, one thing that I do before I put decals on it, I just give it a very light sanding with, um, I think this is 1400 grit paper. Give it a nice sanding, make sure it's nice and everything is nice and smooth to the touch, to the fingertips. Then I take a little swab uh, and just wipe it down, wipe by any dust. And take another one and just wipe it once more, dry it off, uh, make sure that there's no dust in the area before I start putting on the decals. Um, when I do the decals, I usually start with the wings. I'm just gonna uh, do, uh, do the wings here in front for you. And then I'll do the rest off camera and then do a final reveal. Alright, so the first things for the wings that we're going to attach is going to be these uh, the stripes. I'm going to cut them out. Uh, these regular scissors. And I'm just going to cut out the one. And carefully cut them. I'm going to do the uh, top half here. one off, put it off to the side so I don't get it wet, and you know, refer to my decal placement sheets, and do a little trimming here, the excess paper. Um, what I like to do is just uh, do the same thing I do with the plastic, just do a little dry fitting, make sure things will fit correctly, and it appears they do. Okay. Alright, so I'm just going to dip in a little bit of water. Should only take a few seconds. Using the same water, I'm just going to wet the area. Put out of the water. Okay. Test it, see if it's. I right, just leave that for a few more seconds. You don't want to necessarily over soak your decals either. Um, because then the adhesion, the glue will just wash away. And test it out, right? I'll leave it a little bit more. And you want to use room temperature water. You don't want to water this too hot or too cold. Uh, either one will affect your decals. Uh, it will take too long for it to get, if it's too cold, too long for it to get off the paper. If it's uh, too warm, it might wrinkle up your paper. Okay, there you see it starts moving off. Carefully move it off here to the edge and place it on. We're holding one edge. Putting on decals can be very tedious, tedious, excuse me, um, but it is a very important part. And that's uh, how we determine uh, how it uh, really gives it life to the model. I'm going to position it here, right up, right up to the edge there. Use the panel lines as a point of reference. Now, while I'm doing this, I just painted the canopy frame, um, so I'm letting that dry. So while that dries, I'm going to st um, start here on these decals, so gently. Then take a little cotton swab, a little cotton Q-tip here, just roll it, wipe some of the excess water, make sure there's no 
bubbles trapped underneath. in the middle and just work your way towards the edges here. Just nicely pressed. And there you go. Alright, All right, so that's one. Now I'm going to do the other one. Cut that out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera now. I'm going to do this and the two stars um, to, so I can give you a good idea how this is going to look finished. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, back. All right, so I've attached the, uh, the two main ones for the wings here, for the uh, top of the wings, the stripes and the stars. Um, I put a little bit of Microsol on it. Just uh, brushed it on using a nice uh, clean brush. Uh, put it on. Um, I don't know what you can see here in the camera, but it has started to wrinkle up a bit. You can see that wrinkling is good. Uh, I mean that uh, the uh, decal decal will uh, be sucked right onto the uh, onto the panel lines and so forth, so you hear it nice and cleanly. So what I'm going to do: let this top part dry sufficiently, flip it over, do the other half of the wing, uh, then do the tail, and then do the major. Uh, uh, parts, uh, which here in the decal sheet uh, are going to be the, the tail, the sides, and the, here on the bottom. And then lastly, I'll uh, we'll go through and put on the stenciling. Alright, so this is it for this part of the update. Um, I'll be working on this over the next uh, day or so, and then I'll post a, another update over the weekend. Alright, thank you very much uh, for watching, and take care. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome back. All right, I finished the decaling and I applied, uh, attached the uh, ordnance and the little tippy bits as you see here. Uh, so this is pretty much the uh, finished model. Um, I have all the, the uh, decals there. So you can see the decals there on the uh, on the tail, on the front of the plane, and underneath. See, I drop this. Oops! So there goes the canopy. Actually, I had that uh, just friction attached, did not have that glue in. So you see the uh, decals there underneath. Uh, now, this being a show plane, a commemorative plane, probably didn't have all this ordnance on it, but I decided to put it on, add a little bit more texture and color to it. Uh, so you have your blue, your red, uh, your white, your green, and your gray. set this down. All right. I don't have the canopy glued on. Just is I'm going to leave it open unglued so you can pose it open. Um, of course, it stay there fine before I start filming. But it usually happens. Start filming and things fall apart. But uh, you get the idea. But here let me show you a close up of the cockpit there. I got the pilot, now he has his arms, his head, all set up there. So I think it looks pretty cool. It's a pretty, you know, different, interesting color scheme for the plane. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the model itself, I mean, overall, it came out okay. I mean, it does have its fit issues. I mean, this is not a Tamiya kit or even a Hasegawa kit. Although the parts break down and many of the parts do... Um, look a lot like the uh, Hasegawa kits. I do have a cup, a few Hasegawa kits in my stash and I probably should have done a comparison before I built this but a lot of these parts do look a lot like the Hasegawa. Not that I'm suggesting that Academy uh, use them to copy them but uh, a lot of the parts break down and parts are very similar. Um, except probably for the finish. The, the finishing and the fitting of the Hasegawa kit is probably much better than, than here. I mean, the main issues here with this it was the ring roots, which do have to have some considerable feeling, uh, filling on it. And also underneath, 
where you have the inset there for the wings uh, you also have some considerable filling in there as well um, that's the, really the major issues as far as fitting um, everything else went out pretty well together uh, the instructions are not the best um, also the details as you saw some of the details that you have on the um, under the wing there they were molded as crisply as the other kit that I had built from Academy uh, so it's probably just a mold issue could have been just my particular sample issue um, at the end of this video I'll show you some stills of this completed model so you can see better um, I do want to take one quick step back from the model uh, just to talk about this Academy kit um, like I said I did build this before uh, there's two different boxings and if you were in the store and take a look at the boxings there Oops, excuse me. They're identical, uh, even down to the copyright on the boxes are identical. They both say 1991. Uh, the only difference is, is the kit part number on the box. One is 1688 and one is uh, 12259. This is the earlier one from 1990 and this is the later one from uh, 2003, 2004, I believe. Um, so that's really the only difference. You're, otherwise, they're really hard to tell just from looking at the box. Uh, but once you open the box, really the only difference between the two kits is the instructions. Uh, you have your earlier style instructions, and then you have your later style instructions. As you can see, it's uh, even though it's the same graphic, the style of the instructions are are different. Uh, the illustrations inside are the same, um, although there are mistakes here. It's the same drawing, so just laid out differently. Like this is this is the new one. This is the original one. Uh, the original one had the color callouts in English and uh, a little bit more details on it, but some of the information here is incorrect. Here in the newer style, it's totally pictograms with the numbers that you have referred back to the color callouts. Um, and those are really the, the biggest difference. Um, other than the, the uh, mold issue that um, the, the earlier one was crisper, the newer one was not as crisp as you saw um, in one of the other build videos. Uh, there was some detail missing from the mold itself. Uh, so if you were to wanted to get this kit, uh, uh, maybe if you get the older boxing, you'll get a crisper mold. Uh, but if you get the newer modeling, you, you'll get uh, probably better instructions, or more accurate instructions. If you do get the older kit, the, the 1688 one, um, there are a couple of typos here. Uh, there are typos here within the uh, little story here. But what's important is some of the information here on how to build this. Uh, specifically what I noticed uh, here in number 12 here, where it says here, uh, clear green, clear, clear red. Uh, for the for the two uh, bumps there for the front of the plane, obviously those do not get clear. Uh, those are painted the uh, body of the one the one of the grays. Um, what that was intended for are the uh, navigation lights here in the front. That's supposed to be red and green respectively, instead of the, the other piece, the other instructions over here. So that's uh, a mistake on the older instructions. Um, the decals themselves, um, um, they're pretty good. I mean, they lay down and, uh, like, you know, they cartograph, so they did go down really well, uh, really nicely. They handle really well. Um, uh, I did notice that the way they had the uh, decals laid out on the actual decal sheets, they had it broken down in sections. If you look at one of the previous videos, you see the top section of the main uh, decals, which is the stars, the stripes, and so forth. Uh, then there are three other sections, and the three other sections basically are in the order in which you would apply them. You have your port, your starboard side, you have your top, and you have your bottom. Um, and you have your fuel tank here. Uh, so each one on their own little section, so you can go step by step. It makes it easy to find the decals for the section that you're working on. Uh, so that works out really well. So it's well organized and high quality. So highly recommended. So very good. Thumbs up. Uh, and for the model itself, would I recommend? I would recommend it. I mean, it's in the $20 range, so it's about a third of the cost of a Tamiya kit, for example, or uh, two-thirds half the cost of a Hasegawa kit. I mean, the Hasegawa and the Tamiya kit are going to have better fit, and, better fit and finish, but, um, you know, you do save money so you can either 
get some aftermarket decals or invest in a, a resin seat or, or something else in it and also just to practice your model building skills and painting techniques uh, I think that's very important uh, I think it's better to do that on a less expensive model than to spend learning on an expensive model that you might you know to be truthful you know mess up and that's you know money wasted so I think it's a good part of your learning experience as a modeler anyway so thank you for watching this and stay tuned uh, to watch the uh, the slideshow of the finished build here All right thank you much bye bye